This is the DS920 Plus, the latest consumer 4-bay network attached storage system from Synology, designed for the power user. This is Windows 10 running inside of a virtual machine on the DS920 Plus, which I can access from the browser. This is Linux Mint, also running in my browser. This is a Pi-hole Docker image that acts as an ad blocker for all my mobile devices when at home. And this is Synology Moments, a perfect DIY replacement for Google Photos that you can run locally on your own network. In fact, you can run a bunch of Docker images for fantastically useful server features all at the same time, as well as native software packages like Plex, the best media manager around, and a whole host of other software I just don't have time to list. Run it all at once on the DS920 Plus. This thing is a beast. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com, and if you want a network attached storage system that will do far more than just fling files around your network, then look no further than the Synology DS920 Plus. It's available now without drives for around $550. Join me as I take a closer look. So this review is aimed at someone much like myself who probably has some experience already with Synology devices of the, the lower end, the J series, such as the 220J that we reviewed a couple of months back. For that reason, I'm not gonna go over some of the very basic core features that are offered uh, across the Synology line. If you want to find out more about the DSM uh, operating system, for instance, then do go check out some of our other Synology reviews. Instead, in this review, I want to focus more on the DS920 Plus hardware, its upgradability, and the features that it can do that some of the other models can't. I have also done a separate video on Surveillance Station, which is Synology's own DIY CCTV system software. Uh, offered with all Synology devices. And of course that can run on this too. And there's a separate video uh, that explains Synology model numbers. So if you're looking at two Synology models like the 920 Plus and say the 418J, which pretty much look identical, uh, then you might be wondering, well, what's, what's the difference in features? What does one offer that the other one doesn't? then that video will be useful to you. Anyway, all the links are down in the description, so do go check those out as well if those interest you. Okay, so first let's talk specs of the Synology DS920+. Plus. It's powered by an Intel Celeron J4125 quad-core CPU running at two gigahertz with a 2.7 gigahertz burst mode, and that's backed up by four gigabytes of DDR4 2666 megahertz memory. That's upgradable to eight gigabytes via a single SO DIMM slot. There's hardware support for AES NI encryption, which gives you much better performance with encrypted drives. Around the rear, you'll find dual gigabit ethernet ports, which can be link aggregated without a fancy router. There's one USB 3 port, which you'll probably want to connect an uninterruptible power supply to. There's one eSATA port for extension. And there's another USB 3 port on the front panel, which is useful for quickly mounting an external drive. With 16 terabyte drives, the maximum total capacity of the system is 64 terabytes. However, you'll probably want to set that up with one disk redundancy, which brings down the maximum capacity to 48 terabytes. Official performance figures put the maximum throughput speed at around 225 megabytes a second. However, that's in a link aggregated mode uh, in total. To any single client, you're only gonna get around half of that uh, due to a single gigabit ethernet connection. Finally, being a plus series model, Synology guarantees the hardware for three years, and that's backed up by their usual seven year support cycle for the software and the OS. The whole thing weighs about two and a half kilograms and measures 223 by 199 by 166 millimeters. So one of the biggest draws of the plus series is that it has enough RAM and a powerful enough CPU that it can support running virtual machines either via the official virtual machine manager software that Synology offers, or through the third-party Docker images, although they sort of play a different role. But this really opens up a huge range of additional features and server software that you can run. For instance, I've got a test install of Windows 10 that I can boot up whenever I need. Of course, you're not gonna be gaming on it, 
or doing anything like that. But for installing a quick utility and taking some screenshots, it works fine. I've also got a Linux Mint test install, and these were both created just using standard install ISOs that you can download from anywhere. Just add them to the VM manager, spin up a new instance, and then walk through the usual install routines. Now, of course, these are the sort of virtual machines that you could run on any uh, modern laptop or computer. However, having them available in the browser is a really cool feature. If you're not familiar with Docker, it's a way of virtualizing a complete installed system image readily configured for you to pretty much use out of the box. All you need to do is pass in a couple of system variables like pointing it to a data directory, perhaps the port that you want it to run on, uh, and then boot it and it just works. Someone else has already done the difficult job of setting everything up for you. For example, I'm running a Pi-hole server on here, uh, which for those of you who don't know is essentially a replacement DNS server that will drop all requests to uh, add services. And it does that at a network level rather than you having to install an extension in your browser, which is great for things like smart TVs uh, that come with advertising built in that you never asked for. Or just if you have lots of devices on your network, uh, then you can adjust your router settings and it will automatically use that DNS server for anything on the network, thereby blocking all ads. So Pi-hole was originally designed to run on a Raspberry Pi, as the name suggests. And as much as I love Raspberry Pi, uh, to be honest, I don't want to run something that is critical to network infrastructure uh, on something like that. It's a lot more reliable when on the Synology box that's running all the time anyway. I'm also hoping to install a Calibre server uh, which is an ebook host that can deliver various formats of ebooks to any device on your network. And if you're interested in running a Unify uh, Wi Fi enterprise network, you'll be pleased to know that you can run a dockerized version of the Unify controller too rather than having to plug a hardware dongle into your switch. But Docker is a huge topic, and I admit it's all quite new to me too. If you've ever thought, wouldn't it be cool to run whatever server on my home network, chances are someone's already gone and made a Docker image for it, which you can download to your 920 plus, run it easily and safe in the knowledge that if you mess anything up, you can just reset it simply. You don't have to mess around with terminals and text editors or anything like that. It's all easily configured and presented within the DSM operating system. So Docker and virtual machines, very cool. Another reason to go with the 920 Plus is that as well as being one of the most powerful uh, consumer level network attached storage systems that Synology offers, it's also quite upgradable. So one of the things you can upgrade is to add some NVMe caching drives, and these are completely separate to your four drive RAID array. There are two slots that you'll find underneath the system. If you add one NVMe drive, this can act as a read cache. If you add two, it can be a read write cache. And the reason for this is that you essentially need to set them up in a sort of mini RAID uh, to account for some of the data errors that can be introduced on uh, SSD disks. Now you should also know that they have a somewhat limited life cycle, so they are sort of considered consumables and will need to be replaced after a while. Now NVMe drives are a fairly pricey upgrade, but they will seriously add to the performance of any virtual machines that you have, uh, as well as general system performance. That said, one thing they won't help with is sequential read-write file access. So anytime you're pulling files over the network or writing them, they will not help to speed that up. And for that reason, it's really difficult to do any empirical testing as to how much it will actually speed up the system. So you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. That said, if you open up the cache advisor, it can run a quick system scan of everything that's running uh, and then tell you roughly how big of a cache size uh, would be of benefit to you. So that's always worth checking if you're considering upgrading. The second thing you can upgrade is the memory. Now, although four gigabytes is soldered to the motherboard, there is one free SO DIMM slot where you can add up to four gigabytes of additional memory. This is super cheap. I picked this one up for about 20 quid uh, and that's the maximum four gigabyte upgrade that you can do. Now, some people have reportedly added much bigger memory modules like up to 32 gigabytes. However, I don't suggest doing that. The CPU inside of this doesn't officially support anything beyond eight gigabytes. And although the system may report it initially as 
hey, you've got 32 extra gigabytes of memory. When it comes later to, say, restoring a system disk, you may find that it doesn't work. And apart from anything, Synology will be unable to support you with that sort of configuration. So for me, it's just not worth the risk. Lastly, the 9 of the 920 plus name relates to the maximum number of drives that you can have installed. Now, obviously, it only comes with four drive bays. However, with using the eSATA port around the back, you can connect up one of the Synology expansion models. So right now that would be the DX517 model, which adds in another five bays for another potential 80 terabyte uh, volume. As with all Synology models, if you set it up using the default Synology hybrid RAID, one disk redundant system, then expanding your storage is super easy. Either throw another drive into an empty bay or replace the smallest drive in your array with one that is equal to or larger than the largest disk and your system will expand to fill out any extra space that it can. Now this means that you can mix and match drive sizes either when you first create the system or when you're upgrading as long as you just follow that rule that it will always be a larger disk. So for instance, you could start with a two and a four terabyte. You wouldn't be using the extra bit of the four terabyte until you added more, but it would still work. You could add another four terabyte and use a bit more. You could add an eight, then you could replace the two with a 10. And all the while you wouldn't be losing data. Your whole system would stay as it is. And all you would be doing is upgrading the hardware. It's really simple and it's worked great for me over the years. Now this is in contrast to standard RAID types where you have to use all of the same drives and anytime you want to upgrade it, you're gonna be starting from scratch again. Now the drives are really easy to install from a hardware perspective. Just pull out one of the trays and then you'll find the plastic fixings on either side of the drive tray. So there's no screws or screwdriver required. So should you buy the DS920 Plus? This thing is an absolute beast of a network attached storage system. But more importantly, it still runs Synology software. Yes, if you go to competitors, you can find more powerful systems at a cheaper price point. Or you can even build your own system from scratch and run some open source software for the best in value. And if you choose to go that route, then good luck. I've trusted Synology with my data for over a decade and it's never let me down. I've gone from small drives upgraded all the way through gradually to larger drives, to bigger systems, to better systems, and experienced my fair share of drive failures as well, and yet never lost any data. And I can't really speak any higher praise than that. One other thing I should also mention is that you should be pairing your network attached storage system with a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. A suitable sized one uh, for this cost me about a hundred pounds. And it means that if there is ever a power cut, which is fairly frequent out here uh, in this rural area, then you won't be suffering any data loss because of that sudden power cut. So do factor that into your costings as well. But the things you can do with the 920 plus once you've got docker and virtual machine manager running are just incredible really it will quickly become one of those devices that you have absolutely no idea how you ever lived without one whether that's serving up 4k videos to your home cinema or transcoding them for your smartphone hosting a lifetime of photos in synology moments or securing your home in surveillance station. This thing will handle it all with ease. And it does all that reliably and in an easy to upgrade fashion with the Synology Hybrid RAID. So at any point, you'll be able to upgrade your storage. But on balance, there are a few reasons you might not want to buy a Synology DS920+. Plus. The first is if you know that your data needs are going to grow well beyond 48 terabytes, uh, in the reasonable short term, in which case Synology does offer larger devices that might be more suitable for you. For most people, I think four bays is probably a good compromise between price and capacity. There is also the issue of the gigabit LAN ports, or rather the lack of multi-gigabit LAN ports. And if you're intending to use your network storage system for, say, networked video editing, uh, then this makes it unsuitable. It's ultimately that which is going to limit the performance of this system. Now, if you know this is a feature that you want, then consider getting one of the larger devices, which has an expansion slot into which you can add a multi-gigabit Ethernet port card. However, it is a bit of a disappointment that this isn't built into the systems on the Plus series from the start. While link aggregation is neat and means that you'll be able to serve good performance to multiple uh, different devices at once, 
it doesn't help with speeding up anything to a single client. Lastly, some reviewers have lamented the lack of HDMI port, uh, which you'll find on some hybrid NAS devices sold by competitors. Now, personally, I think that these are two completely separate jobs that should be handled by different devices. You can, for instance, buy an Amazon Fire Stick for $50 that'll handle playback just fine over the network. However, if all you want is primarily a media player which can also host files and can also send them over the network, then one of those hybrid devices might be more suited to your needs. If you've watched this far in the review and you're interested in a Synology device but not quite ready to jump in at the deep end, uh, then do go check out our review of the DS220J, which is a budget entry-level device that still runs uh, most of the software that Synology offers. However, I do warn you that you will quickly want to upgrade and buy an even bigger device with more drives. Anyway, thanks for watching and thanks to Synology for sending this over for review. If this has proved helpful, given you a bit of an insight into the 920 Plus and why you might want it, then do please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more weekly gadget giveaways, hardware reviews, tech tutorials, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.